So hello, yeah, my name is Matyash, uh, so I'm at Foresight, and I will be uh, presenting the intelligent cooperation tree that Alison has already mentioned uh, in, in her previous talk. The idea behind the tech tree is to try to map real areas of sort of scientific and technological development via this format that comes sort of from these sort of civilization style video games. Now, in these video games, you're often developing this like very, very artificial civilization and very, very, and so for example, the way it sort of often works there is that you have a, several capabilities that you need to develop before you can unlock a new one, as I think one of the questions sort of previously sort of pointed out. And the, the reality is sort of, sort of a little bit messier than that. You sort of have a lot of people that are just exploring various technologies. Um, something might enable a particular development but might not, not be essential to it. Um, so this tree is sort of look, tr trying to look at um, how kind of one might do this particularly for the area of intelligent cooperation. Um, so what, why sort of intelligent cooperation? I think that sort of intelligent cooperation is a very, very nice kind of, um, sorry, zoom in, okay, even more, okay. Yeah, Martin needs to figure out how to label the force. So, so this is, so in all of these civilization type video games, there is like this big overall goal, some kind of technological utopia that one is building towards. And for the real tree, one needs sort of a, a more specific goal, but in this case, it is sort of, intelligent cooperation. And the idea is that, um, um, we, and this is really is something that sort of ties together a lot of sort of technologies from cryptography, um, AI, and security, because the idea is that what all of these technologies in some sense have in common is that they enable better cooperation between humans themselves and also between sort of humans and AI agents in the future. Um, so as sort of, um, as I mentioned before, we sort of have slightly different, uh, we, ha we have a, several different types of nodes on um, on, on this too, we have sort of the goal nodes, the technology nodes, and the challenge nodes. Um, so for the, for the goal nodes on this particular tree, um, we sort of, sort of ended up with sort of five of them, which is sort of physical security for AI systems, cryptographic methods for complex forms of cooperation, privacy respecting AI systems, um, and sort of effective tools for deterring collusion, collusion, collusion and deception, and we have sort of one more, which is sort of, sort of solving principal agent problems. So some of these are very much sort of like goals um, that, you know, so for example, um, you know, principal agent problems. So the whole idea is there is some specific problem in how sort of people or AI, I guess, sort of sort of cooperate with each other. Um, and, um, you know, there are these specific technologies that people are working on that might help with addressing these things. Um, and then in other areas, such as, for example, like up here with sort of cryptographic methods for, um, sort of complex forms of cooperation. Um, it's more that people are sort of working on a lot of these different technologies, some of which I will talk about um, later, that um, basically are, are, you know, they, they might serve many, many different purposes. Um, so those are sort of the goal nodes. And then next we move to these um, sort, of, uh, uh, sort of technology nodes, which is, for example, um, what, uh, what sort of Alison mentioned before. So very, very often what people, what people are actually working on will be some specific projects where they are working, so I don't know, a specific, technology or a product that is aimed at, oh God, is this gonna show? Okay, well, let's hope it loads. Um, um, and uh, um, the, the goals are sort of the narratives that people sort of tell about um, where these, is it gonna come? Yeah, so for each of these technologies, um, basically, so as, as was mentioned before, the idea is to have um, something that might help orient sort of funders or sort of future talent, and so, to, to give an example of homomorphic encryption, so this is one very exciting cryptographic uh, technology, which is basically um, like is the, th there are sort of ways of computing on encrypted data, so you can basically outsource computational work to somebody else who will who will basically um, sort of do it for you without really knowing what kind of data they are computing on. Um, and with all of these technology nodes, what they list is basically you know sort of what the technology is about, why people are excited about it, like what is its sort of potential, and then sort of some, something about its history, just sort of to give a bit of context, and then as I've mentioned before, um, uh, some, of the, some of the sort of key actors or potential projects that are currently active that people might sort of, sort of look into. And with regards to that, there are like all kinds of sort of specific, um, so as again, as Alison mentioned before, um, one great thing about this is that this is sort of an AI-backed uh, graph tool, and, um, 
th this sort of helps sort of in two ways. So the first is, as Alison had pointed out before, um, is one can sort of look at sort of specific questions that one might ask. So for example, if I'm a new talent, and maybe I just wanna sort of ask what sort of theoretical aspects of homomorphic encryption in particular I might wanna focus on, I might ask it sort of this sort of a question, and it will, um, uh, uh, let's see if something, something sort of interesting happens. So a disappointing answer, but nonetheless, it can sort of point out to something like IBM research or Microsoft research. Um, and for example, if you're a funder though, for example, you might want to, um, there, are two, there are two different companies that are listed further down on this list called um, Enville and Duality Technologies. And I'm, what, like a potential funder might be interested in like what are really the differences between them. And um, again, the, 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 the LLM sort of allows, allows one to, um, to sort of explore sort of something in this spirit. Um, the LLM is also useful for just sort of gathering information about various areas because this is like a very, very large number of areas that one might try to map. Ideally one would do this with open source, but as a, as a sort of a first sort of step, um, the LLM is sort of very, very kind of useful, useful for that. And finally, we sort of have a bunch of um, these sorts of challenge nodes to pick one, for example, for like, here we have another sort of technology, uh, which is called zero knowledge proofs. So zero knowledge proofs are this sort of, um, um, are a technique for basically showing that somebody that you have a particular piece of information, like a password, say, without actually revealing that piece of information to them. Um, and there are many sort of exciting um, sort of projects or ideas sort of in the crypto space about what they might enable. But one challenge, admittedly sort of a long-term one, is to develop um, sort of quantum resistant versions of these sorts of protocols. So um, there are a lot of these schemes that are potentially sort of vulnerable um, to uh, being sort of subverted if one really had access to like a fully functional um, quantum computer. Um, and um, basically like, like, like this is sort of like w one of the key challenges where you know, to future proof these systems one would sort of need to develop. And for example, Signal is currently sort of working on, on one such scheme um, for, for, for basically for, for the zero knowledge sort of aspects of their, of their, of their particular protocol. Um, if, if I just sort of like look at sort of the, the tree more broadly, so, so to, to for example pick one part that is sort of much more in this goal sort of oriented way, um, it is this idea of sort of privacy respecting AI systems. So in many, many cases um, there, are, there are huge amounts of information out there, um, people's health information, financial information, their sort of preferences that are in some sense, per, per, uh, that, are, that are basically personal information. And what we would wanna do, there is like sort of a large number of people that are working on this, is like, can you develop ways to train very, very sort of strong models from that data that don't basically compromise any of these, that don't compromise user sort of privacy um, in, any, in any sort of sort of real way, either by sort of like, sort of like sort of it being somehow in the model or sort of sort of come out, out of it. And there is sort of like, it, there are sort of a number of different technologies that people are kind of working on that are directly related to that. So, so there is this whole set of these privacy machine preserving, um, uh, sorry, sorry, privacy preserving machine learning frameworks, many of which rely on sort of homomorphic encryption that I mentioned before. There are also techniques from something called secure multi-party computation that, um, that basically um, um, sort of can help with that. Uh, there is differential privacy, which is sort of um, another set of techniques that allow people to sort of very finely control um, what sort of information is or isn't private. And finally, there is sort of um, like, for example, federated learning, which is um, sort of people have sort of these separate collections of information and um, there are techniques where basically each can somehow learn something from them and you sort of are able to combine them in a way where, where kind of nothing about the, the underlying data sets is, is sort of revealed. And for each of these, there are now um, a lot of these sort of different challenges. Um, many of them basically take the form of that, you know, for, for a lot of these sort of things, the, the underlying thing is sort of more of a proof of concept. A lot of these cryptographic, um, uh, uh, um, techniques basically consume a lot of resources, and so one would need like more resource efficient versions to make them practical. And also there is this issue of how one sort of develops the APIs and other tools that actually would then allow a developers and kind of other product product builders to sort of, to sort of, um, uh, to sort of um, um, kind of sort of, sort of use them in, in sort of real systems. 
Um, there, are, there are all kinds of sort of interesting things that one can learn when one sort of tries to map such a big overview. Um, one, for example, one of the most interesting things that became clear to me is that there are a lot of techniques that um, were originally developed just for example for like protecting user privacy or for example protecting the just the physical security of, of AI systems that um, kind of played this double role when you sort of look at them in a different way and they can also basically be used as a way to kind of allow us to, to sort of allow us to kind of be protected from the AI systems or at least you know that they have potential to be useful useful in, in that way where um, 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 and, and so that, that for example is sort of one one kind of interesting thing that emerges out of having sort of such a such a broad overview another interesting thing is that for example cryptography which in the minds of many people is just still associated with sort of secure communication um, if, if one kind of looks at a lot of these developments in the last in the last sort of you know, th sort of 30, 40 years, they all kind of are moving towards basically exactly this goal of intelligent cooperation. It's all about enabling um, more complex form of, more complex forms of sort of cooperation of people doing something together, such as, I don't know, computing the result of a vote, um, while sort of preserving um, um, sort, of, sort of the relevant, the relevant privacy. Um, since I, I guess I don't have much time, uh, the, uh, so yeah, this is very much kind of the, 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 the sort of the, the first version of, the, of this sort of intelligent cooperation tree. Uh, we would love to sort of talk to you about it if you're sort of interested. Um, there are a lot of kind of interesting challenges that emerge when one sort of tries to put something like that together. Um, one is that um, um, there are, for example, um, it, it is sort of difficult to, to keep sort of things current because there, are, there is like a never ending sort of set of projects and ideas that sort of keep popping in and out of existence. Um, people are sort of exploring different things. Um, and so it is sort of, it, you know, it is not exactly clear whether they are like really, really critical. One great three thing about these trees would be if they would really be able to point out to what, like what are the most critical problems or challenges um, to solve. Um, and sort of, sort of a bunch of sort of other, other areas in that way. So yeah, that'll be all, thank you.